Blog Talk Radio. Welcome back, everybody. This is the Five by Five. This is your host, David. Um, kind of a interesting show today because I'm the biggest geek ever. Um, a lot of people don't know that, so I thought I would dedicate this show to Superman's anniversary, which I didn't know that it was the 75th anniversary of Superman. Um, on uh, April the 20th, uh, Superman turned 75, and a lot of comic book things going on this week. There was uh, the comic book con in Chicago, um, I guess it was last weekend, which I'm so t- um, mad that I didn't get to attend. Um, and also, free comic book day is coming up this Saturday on May the 4th. Iron Man's coming out third, but today is dedicated to Superman and all the all the actors who have played actually the role of Superman um, starting back in the 40s. Um, and up until today, with new um, actor um, Henry Cavill, and I probably pronounced that name wrong, um, the guy who played Theseus is playing the new Superman, which is coming out on, um, I believe it's June the 14th. I think in the the version of the show, I think I said the 16th, but I'm pretty sure um, it's on the 14th. And I think Walmart's doing something special, and they're giving um, guest passes on the 13th. Um, I think we do have Darling Nikki out there today. Darling Nikki, are you out there? Hello. <laughs> Thanks again for sitting in with us today. What's going on, chick? Nothing much. Just uh, loving today, <laughs> enjoying today, and uh, ready to talk about some superheroes. Now, you didn't know your cousin was that big of a geek, did you? Did. Well, maybe you did. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you did. I don't know. <laughs> but, Just a little uh, bit. Just a little bit. I'm big. I'm a big old nerd. I don't know if you was here. You ever see my my comic book collection? I don't think I ever showed it to you. Um, but one of these days, when I sell it, <laughs> um, we're also running a contest, and um, I guess I'll tell you guys about that at the end of the show. Um, we actually had uh, two or three people in the chat room today. Um, hey guys, if you want to call in, you can. Um, hope you guys uh, enjoy the show. If you have any questions or you have something to add that I missed, um, please feel free to in the chat box, and um, I will uh, uh, hopefully uh, answer you or be able to um, add it to the show today. Anyhow, getting started, um, the Men of Steel, which was the name of the blog on my uh, on the related blog that I have, the Recycle Blog Talk dot Blogspot dot com. And uh, like I said, we're going to just go back and talk about all the guys who have played Superman and maybe some of the girls that are related to the show. And uh, it takes us all the way back to, I want to say, the 1940s, um, where uh, an actor who actually played it, it was the first Superman movie, black and white. Now, I remember, I actually remember this because mom had, my mother had took us to a we um, here in town. We always have a May Day festival. I think, darling Nikki, y'all might have came one year during the the um, the May the May Arts Festival. Maybe. Maybe. I can't remember. I, I can't remember you being there one time. Anyhow, it's something we have annually. I don't know if they do it do it anymore, but back then they was until so they had a um, a uh, a revival, a, a a superhero movie revival, and this was back in had to be the seventies at this time when I was watching when I was a kid and um my mom takes us and 
the the characters look weird. I remember there was a Batman one, there was a Shazam, Shazam one, and there was a Superman one. And you know, and I was like doing while doing my research, I, I remember that, and I was like, I wonder who the guy was who played um, a Superman. His name was uh, actually Kirk Allen, uh, who played. Um, Clark Kent slash Superman in the one of the very first movies. I know it has kind of more like an alien theme, and he wasn't as well known as um, the guy George we- George Reeves. Do you remember that? I know you're a little younger than me, but uh, it was black and white, and he was kind of a I guess I guess it would be the Silver Age um, or Golden Age Superman, little gray temples and uh, kind of soft looking. You remember him? I don't remember him. I remember um, it was a Christopher Reeves. I remember yeah. that when that first, I guess, uh, second or third one came out. Clark. Yeah, that was uh, yes. Christopher Reeves came. It came. He came. You know, I didn't know it, it was the late. Um, I believe it was the late seventies when the, the original Superman Superman movies. But prior to that, another guy named he. It, George Reeves was his name. Then it was Christopher Reeve. Um, oh, but George Reeve, wow. he played um, Superman in the Adventures of Superman, which came on. It was a weekly show. And little did I know, it was a, it was 50s. And so every Sunday after church, you know, after mom and my sister and I came from church, dad and I would watch uh, the Adventures of Superman. I'm thinking it's brand new. And it was kind of cool. I just remember it was really, really not weird, you know, because um, – he could type really fast, and when he was doing the Clark King, Clark Kent um, scenes, he would type really, really fast, and I would be like, "Wow, that guy types fast!" And then, you know, he 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 he'd jump out the window if there was a a superhero emergency, he'd jump out the window, and <laughs> and for the time, I thought that was cool, you know. But when going back to the revival, I just remember it being very, very rough, you know, as an adult looking through adult, remembering in adult eyes. I was like, but I was bored anyhow during that initial revival. Cause I remember going to sleep on mama's on my mom's leg, and and I remember she, mom was so mad. She was like, I can't believe you made me spend this money, and you came in here and went to sleep. You know, she should have told me it was gonna be horrible. I, uh, you're old. She she was old. She 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 seen the original. She <laughs> she should have told me that it was horrible. <clears throat> Excuse me, and uh, um, uh, the, like I said, the typing really fast. And uh, it, George Reeves, he did a really good job. It lasted for quite some time. But you know, like I said, when I was watching it, they were all reruns. It wasn't new. And I think eventually they went to Technicolor. Remember when they used to have, it was everything's black and white, and then all of a sudden it went to this kind of, te- they called it Technicolor, and it was in like color, like watercolor colors on TV. Right. right. It's showing our age, if we can remember black and white television <laughs> as being the norm instead of the, the, the long forgotten exception. But uh, then... Then comes one of my favorite uh, memories of um, what what I of my childhood and me liking com- comic books. It kind of solidified my love of comic books. Let's see if you remember this, uh, Nicole. Gather together from the cosmic reaches of the universe. Here in this great hall of justice are the most powerful forces of good ever assembled. Do you remember that? I don't remember that. <laughs> oh my God! I'm not as big of a geek in superheroes as you are. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. You have just <laughs> lost the point of the of the best cousin. <laughs> you have definitely lost points there. Um, you had to gain those back, so you have to go somewhere on Free Comic Book Day and oh, get. No. Oh, actually, and I forgot to tell you guys, Free Comic Book Day on Saturday they are running. Um, it's a special Infinity Comic by DC, and also um, there's going to be a Superman book. I don't know exactly what it was. I couldn't find it online. Um, but you guys can go to their website. You can look at my website. There's a link. And I also are doing Free Comic Book Day updates on the website as well. But, yeah, so you have to go to Free Comic Book Day. I don't know if you have a comic book store close to where you live and pick up the Superman comic book. That, that'll that okay. get your, your your geek point back because you just I'll lost do that. it. 
<laughs> but that was the I scene. I know the store I'm going to, too. It's on 75th and Keystone. So Is shout out to oh, that store. Out there in Castleton? Nope. It's um, 75th and Keystone. It's near a Walmart. Um, so shout out to that store. And I know about that store because I tried to um, – I dug up an old comic book that I had for years and years because I dated a guy – that love comic books, and so um, I don't know if when we were dating he left it at the house or whatever. I tried to sell the book and didn't get anything for it. But guess what I found? I found that very treasure within that store, and guess what it was? What was it? It was a book of Snow White and mm. uh, a tale of how she got started and everything. And so for those of you that don't know, I'm a Snow White collector. So, hey, See, I didn't even it worked know out for me. Yep. <laughs> also, you know what? That kind of gives you your geek point back. I, I didn't know that story, so I'm gonna yep. give I'm gonna give you a provisional geek point. So, but you still have to go to Free Comic Book Day on Saturday, okay. <laughs> and, and I need you to take pictures. I'm gonna put stuff on the website, so I'm gonna need you to take pictures because um, we'll we'll be taking pictures and videos and all that good stuff. <laughs> but no, that is the theme to the Super Friends. I woke up every mor every Saturday morning and watched the Super Friends. Um, there was like two versions of it in the seventies. It was one with the two kids that didn't have superpowers. Then it came out a few years later when they kind of uh, revamped it and added more to the Justice League. And they came. You Wonder Twin. Everybody knows who the tw- Wonder Twins are. Mm-hmm. You don't know who the Wonder Twins are. I've heard of them. Wonder Twins powers activate. See, mm-hmm. I can't ask you any more of these questions because you're gonna you're gonna have no points by the end of the show. I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> but you know, again, I, I just loved uh, the Super Friends, and that was my morning thing. Um, then I think it, when it changed to the Super Power Super Powers team or something like that, I didn't like it anymore because I was getting older. And Dad and I would go fishing more on Saturday mornings uh, than me staying home watching cartoons. But I'd rather go. I'd rather had went fishing, so that was okay. I think my, my favorite was a Bizarro episode. Um, and when you look back at it now, I actually bought um, or somebody gave me a gift uh, one year. One of my friends, since my love of comic books for my birthday, they did a whole superhero themed birthday for me, which was kind of cool. And they gave me the first volume of the super friends on dvd and i actually still have it and looking back at the art and superman like he was like 75 you know wonder woman didn't fly and she'd always you know it's so sexist back then when you think about wonder woman and the superman it was so sexist she he would help her out even though she's almost as strong as he is and then now in president comic books she doesn't really need any help from him but uh i just kind of looking back i think that's kind of funny um but it was canceled in the 70s, of course, but we didn't have to wait very long because, as you mentioned, that's when um, the movie industry brought us the Superman, the movie, um, starring none other than Christopher Reeve, who, my, exactly, who, in my opinion, was the quintessential hero. You know, he embodied the role. Everybody loved him. He was cute. And he who was could forget, fine. Yeah, he was really, he was he was he was looking man. He really was. Uh, he was statuesque, and he just kind of it was like, okay, this role was built for you. You are Superman, and um, and he um, uh, okay, lost the train of thought real quick. Yeah, he had by the role, and, and who could forget the perfectly curled? Remember the little piece of curled hair on his forehead. I'm like, yeah, oh, I remember that's that. That's Superman, <laughs> you know. They, and then that th- this, um, I do remember this um, from the Superman movies. The main, the main story between Margot Kidder, which was Lois Lane, and Superman when they was kind of falling in love. That "Can You Read My Mind" song, you remember that? I, I so wish I had song. it queued up because I would let you guys listen to it. But you can go to the website. It's definitely on the website. And I remember my band teacher. Making me, making us play this song, and since at the time I played the French horn, I had the melody, and I was like, and so that that song is forever engraved in my memory because I played it um, a thousand times in band. But to me, that was one of the most memorable memorable scenes from Superman the movie, and you know who didn't love Margot Kidder? You know, are Margot Kidder's 
uh, cigarette smoking, raspy voice Lois Lane was probably the most memorable Lois Lane in the last, what, 30 years, you know, other than Terry Hatcher, you know, but, you know, she was the, she was the girl. She was the one that was in the movie. Um, uh, but, you know, there's there some problems with her. You remember when she was, I think, she, did she go crazy a little bit? She did. She had a, a public um, issue that got a lot of attention where she was found in the bushes of all places. I think I did read and, that. I'm like, in the bushes, seriously? Yeah, yeah. It was really kind of sad. Uh, this was 1996, and she was <clears throat> found in the bushes, uh, scared and out of her head pretty much. Uh, the police found her there. And she uh, had shaved all her head off, and that kind of sounds what? like, yes, yes, it kind of sounds like a familiar um, uh, singer. That, something like that happened to her a couple of years ago, where she shaved exactly. her whole head. And exactly. Was because... But anyway, I don't think so. But <laughs> um, yeah, she had some problems and um, some suspected mental problems, but. Um, she had had some health issues, too, that had surrounded um, an accident about six years prior. It was either a car accident or it was an accident on the set of her TV show. And so, um, you know, she was, wasn't doing good there for a while. But um, so, like I said, that was back in 1996. So hopefully she's okay now. Yeah, because I haven't heard anything from her, you know, normally I when – when they always have these like reboots, you know the, the the show Smallville. You have all these reboots. You know that you'll see these guest appearances of these these actors that have that used to pl- that played the role, and um, I mean, you haven't seen anything from her. I don't think she's acted any. I, I just can't remember um, uh, um, her just being such a big part of that show, and you know she kind of made that. You know I don't remember Lois Lane. Smoke. I know she was really, really like kind of a bully and bullheaded, but you know, n- nobody to me has kind of taken that role and made it their own. Um, and I'm so sorry, Smallville fans. I, I don't remember the name of the Lois Lane for Smallville, and I loved it. I don't know her real name. Um, I guess I gotta look it up real quick. But um, she didn't. She didn't leave that big of an impression on me as Margot Kidder did. And hopefully, like you said, hope she is well. And it's kind of tragic that she had so, some bad stuff because after Superman, we we kind of never seen her anymore, other than kind of the bad stuff that happened to her. Would you say 1996? Right, right. And before that, she even and this is something I didn't know, but um, she even had some political involvement. Uh, oh, I, um, yes. Go ahead. Yeah, in 1984, she was a staunch uh, Democratic and put her support toward Jesse Jackson when he ran for president. And so Maybe that's what messed her career up. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> she, she, she should love Jesse and the Rainbow Coalition alone. Anywho. <laughs> hope she didn't get any bad kryptonite or anything like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I'll have to do a search on her and see what she's doing now. I haven't really yeah, heard because I really didn't look her. up. I think when I did did some little research about for the blog because I wasn't really focusing on the non Superman characters. You know, of course her name comes up and I wanted to see what she was doing. I didn't really see anything. I didn't IMBD her like I didn't the other person. But um, again, it, it, this show's not about her. We love Margot and hope she's doing good. But um, this is about Superman and um. Maybe 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 in a in a in the okay before free comic book day because I'm gonna do a for all you guys who don't know I'm doing a um, on location show uh, I've changed the the format a little bit but on Saturday when I go to free but uh, free comic book day I'm gonna do a show on location maybe get some interviews and just kind of hang out with my nephew and um, just let the tape. Uh, uh, quarter go and listen to things and see if they, I think they're going to have some guests and take a lot of pictures. So the website's going to be full. I, I've been working on my YouTube account to reflect more of the, the, um, of the blog, uh, radio, um, excuse me, blog talk radio show and the website. So hopefully they'll all be up and going and, um, you will get, more pictures and videos and interviews from free comic book day because my cousin's going to go and she's going to, um, <laughs> get get some stuff too. And in the big city, I live in a little small town. She lives in the big city. 
Um, anyhow, going forward, um, this the Superman the movie franchise. I think it spawned, it spawned four movies, and number uh, the first movie. You know, it, it had you know every first movie has to have a first. It's the the big bad villain was Lex Luthor. I think Gene. Remember when Gene Hackman played the the the, the Lex Luthor in the first Superman movie? I remember that was, Hatman, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he was the first Lex Lex Luthor in the movies. Um the number and the Superman number 2, um it brings the the Kryptonians you see in Superman 1 back. They've escaped the Phantom Zone. And if you don't know, darling Nikki, the Phantom Zone is the prison for the villains from Krypton and all other bad villains that Superman doesn't know what to deal with. He sends them to the Phantom Zone. Uh, so they come back, and another character that for me that I thought that kind of took the role, and it's like it, it's emblazoned on my memory is Terrence Stamp, General Zod. There hasn't been another one. I think the new Man of St- Steel movie brings back General Zod, so we'll see how this guy does. But right now, in my opinion, Terrence Stamp has had the best of uh, General Zod out of all the Superman incarnations on television and the movies. And the number three, and you you'll know who this person is. Number three, Richard Pryor was in number three. Remember that? Yeah, Richard Pryor. Yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> I loved um, uh, Superman three. It didn't get re- really good reviews, but I absolutely um, loved it. Uh, he he was funny. Um, you know, he was kind of the anti-villain. You know, he was doing things because he needed money. Then he got caught up, and then they used him. So he ended up, um, he ended up making um, a, a kryptonite that he actually put tobacco in it. And that's when t- t- uh, t- uh, Smokey wasn't so taboo, um, and it made a kryptonite that made super. Uh, ma- it split it, it split Superman in half, so it made a good Superman and a bad Superman. And this is where we see, and of course you probably won't know this, um, Annette O'Toole, who actually was the original Lana Lang in the movies. Do you know who Annette O'Toole is? I should have said that. She um she she in Superman three, she was actually when Clark Kent, when he went back home to Smallville to do um it's his high school reunion, she was Lana Lang. Although I love Smallville's Lana Lang, I loved Annette O'Toole. But to flip it a little bit, Annette O'Toole, I see this is where I love the cameos. Annette O'Toole end up, ended up being on the show Smallville as Clark Kent's mother. She played Martha Kent. So I, when I first seen that, I'm like, oh, my God, they did that. That's so cool. Because, you know, she was in the Superman movies, and she's always looked flawless. She's always looked amazing. Um, love Annette O'Toole. And I'm like, when I seen her on Smallville for the first time, I giggled like an Asian schoolgirl at a Sailor, a Sailor Moon convention. You know, I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it was hilarious. I'm like, Seriously? <laughs> you better go, uh, Martha Kent. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then the fourth incarnation of the Superman movies that starred Christopher Reeve with the quest for peace. And they had this kind of green message, uh, which was good for the time and a nuclear message. And I think sometimes message films just don't translate. And this one didn't. It didn't translate at all. It was some um uh, I think Merle Hemingway was the love, in, the, the kind of the love interest, and Mar- Margot Kidder was there, and it's kind of had a little female, that's my man type of deal. But um, uh, it, it wasn't good. It, it didn't make a lot of money. Um, it, it wasn't. I, mean, I guess it made money for that time, but real quick, I had looked up the other day the first Superman movie. It cost fifty five million to make. Wow. Worldwide. First, oh my God. Yeah. The first movie, it was a production budget. And um, and it, it was still new. Nobody didn't know how it was going to work. Christopher, Christopher Reeve was pretty much a, a unknown actor. Um, it, it, it opened up with uh, like almost eight million. But uh, worldwide, it is made it has made three hundred million dollars. So for a fifty-five million dollar budget, you know that puts a. Uh, well, I guess it was I don't know if Warner Brothers did it. That puts you on the map. And then Superman two had a little bit less of a budget, uh, about a million dollars less, 
and it made uh, considerably less money. It made only a hundred and eight million dollars worldwide. Um, I guess it wasn't um, it wasn't released. It was only released domestically for some reason. Probably some copyright infringement things going on there. And then you get to the third movie, the one with Richard Pryor. It cost thirty thirty nine million to make, and it only made fifty nine million. And then this last one that that they only spent 17 million which you would think as the years that was in 1987 you would think from 1978 to 1987 it would have taken more money but i don't think they cared at that point and they end up losing money it only made 11 million dollars you know so it's like okay well, I don't they remember weren't it doing good yeah it didn't do good at all you know so the first superman movie is really what put superman in the theaters um on the map, so to speak. But that last one, like I said, that's one we don't want to talk about it that much because I didn't like it. I thought it was stupid. And um uh uh I really didn't care too much for it. But you know, that brings us to Christopher Reeves accident. Yeah. You know, who would have thought Superman would have, you know, get messed up in a horseback riding accident that left him paralyzed from the neck down. You know, that you know. was that was unbelievable to everyone, the whole nation. And I think th- his perseverance through it all showed that he oh. was truly a superman, a superhero, you know. Totally, totally. He he says, um, and this, it's funny that you say that because one of his quote was, a hero is someone who, in spite of their weakness, thou art not always knowing the answers, goes ahead and overcomes anyway. And I kind of think that's that's what makes me think he embodied the character so much because he felt that way even in his, you know, worst time of his life. You know, he, he still had that kind of, I'm going to overcome this no matter what because I am a hero. Maybe I don't have superpowers, but I'm a hero to someone and I'm a hero to myself. And he ended up being taking the role as an advocate for paralysis research. Mm. And on the website, there's a link to um, the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation, which um, is for paralysis and spinal cord injury research. And you can make donations. Um, and she's been they they were ever since the accident they were very actively involved. She's still involved. Um, so you know, heroes can take any kind of form uh, than just the ones we see on TV flying around in in capes and tights and all that other kind of stuff that we come to think about superheroes as being in present day. Right. Whew, right. That was a yeah, lot. It just, yeah. It just, and you know, another thing about that, it made you take notice, um, you know, and whether I'm right or wrong, I mean, everything happens for a reason, but I think the whole nation just was in shock and just oh. kind of gasped because, you know, this isn't supposed to happen to Superman. Oh, my God, he's Superman, you know. Exactly, so exactly. Just, it took, I know it took me by surprise, and I think I even cried about it because oh, yeah. it wasn't supposed to happen to him. Not to him. <laughs> you, know? you know, this is the guy who's on top of the world, you know, Mr. Faster Than a Speed and Bullet, Mr. You know, Can Leap um, Tall Buildings in a Single Bound. You know, you're confined right. to a wheelchair, and you can't move. Right. You know, and that kind of puts like, things think, in perspective. And I think just like that took us by shock and surprise, you know, it, it was the same kind of shock that we all experienced when the first Superman came out with him in it, you know, because it was in color. Here he was, he was flying through the skies, and he was saving people. And, and it looked you know, real. that was just, yeah, that was just exciting. Like, oh, my gosh, you know, so... <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, and uh, but you know, like I said, I think his dedication to the work with the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation kind of solidifies itself as I was more than an actor. If the accident had, didn't happen, you know, I don't know how how his life would have changed. But I, I'm with you. Everything happens for a reason. You know, maybe there was somebody or some bodies that needed that that looked to him as a role model, but when no. no necessarily doing the right thing and this happened to teach them a lesson so they were they're able to do something greater we we may not even hear about it in our lifetime or maybe it's already happened but you know that's how i look at things there's a reason for everything and it might not be revealed to us 
ever in our life, but there's a reason for it. Right, true. True. So that, that was the last um, movie, Superman movie at the time. We go back to the small screen, and please tell me you watched Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. <laughs> Oh my God! It, wasn't a, it was a TV show, right? It was a TV show. Um, what, but before, what year around? Um, I want to say it came out in '93, but prior to that, okay. there were there were two Superboy uh, TV shows. Well, not two. There was one with two actors. Do you remember that? Probably not. Y'all had to excuse her, people. Um, <laughs> she's going to make it up to you guys. <laughs> she's going to make it up to you guys because. Um, she needs um, to get on the Superman bandwagon, but <laughs> I bet if, I bet this, if the show was about Prince, she'd be all about it. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> I just t- she's a, the biggest Prince fan in the world, everybody. So he's I bet my if Prince superhero. Had a superhero. <laughs> okay, if he had a big P on his chest, he wears a high heels and slide around Metropolis. T- trust me, I wouldn't be able to get talk today. <laughs> Why is she playing? <laughs> but I love you. But anyhow, the two super the two super boys that played in um, the Superboy show um, it came out in 1988, and um, John Newton was the first Superboy. And so this means absolutely nothing to you. Um, this guy he played, it was, and the Superboy show was about Superboy's time in college. It was kind of hokey, you know. They was trying to do something with the franchise after the movies to kind of capitalize on the movies and bring it to the small screen. And um, this guy John Newton, he was the first in the pr- premiere season, um, but he was replaced. Um, by uh, another guy named Gerard Christopher. Uh, and the reason because he was replaced was uh, that John Newton was replaced because he was a diva. He was a diva in a cape, and then he got arrested for a DUI. So they were like, we got to get rid of you. They renamed the show um, from Superboy to the Adventures of Superboy in the third season with Gerard Christopher um, uh, portraying Super, uh, Clark Kent Superman. And, you know, it didn't last very long. I think it was four seasons that lasted. I can vaguely remember it. I watched it kind of time, but they just looked weird to me. So I, I didn't really like it, but that was, I guess that was, I was in high school at the time. So I was really, really busy. So I really wasn't um, doing too much. And I was here and there and everywhere in high school, but um, it, it went away. And then we didn't get to see anything else to 1993 with, Dean Kane and Lois and Clark, the new Avengers Superman, which I love Dean Kane. I thought I think he was a good Superman. Uh you 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 know who Dean Kane is? Nope. <gasps> <laughs> does not ring a, that name does not ring a bell. If if you guys could see me right now, I'm giving Darling Nikki the most vicious <laughs> side eye, side eye. My, <laughs> that my eyes are hurting. You know, I, I'm going to come up with a little, every time I do a side, I'm going to come up with a little uh, sound effect to do it, then that's going to be for you. But can I, have I to say find something, something, though? Yeah. And I know you're not wanting to talk about Smallville uh, in depth yet, yet or, or, but but I just want to say that audience out there, before we even had this conversation that I was going to be on and we were going to talk about superheroes, <laughs> my cousin Ask me if I knew a few names, and I'm not going to mention them right now. I'll let him mention them as the program goes on. But a few of the names he mentioned, I really perked up, and I'm like, oh, my God, what's he doing now? What's he doing now? What's... They're on Smallville, don't you know? <laughs> and I'm like, um, no, I haven't watched Smallville, so I would know. But I am just totally, totally geeked to know that these people still exist and they're still employed and they're still on the screen uh, acting. And, um, well, you know, we'll talk about that later, but I, I'm, <laughs> I, I can relate to some of these actors. But back to Mr. Kane, I don't re- recall his name, no. Do you remember the movie called The Broken Hearts Club? No. Oh, yeah. And she just lost a gay point, y'all. Even though she's not gay, she just lost one of those too. <laughs> just so y'all know, he it was it was a show about a baseball team, and it was, it was a gay baseball team that um it was a, about everyday drama, 
gay drama, gay relationship, love and hurt, uh, mistrust, stuff like that. And he was in that, which I was surprised to see him. That's a, that was the second time I seen him after uh, Lois and Clark, the new video. I don't think he was in anything else. He's made some guest appearances here and there on some different stuff. But, you know, again, he's kind of out of the public eye. And, then, of course, Terry Hatcher was uh, Lois Lane. And this show was more like a – it was a primetime, like, soap opera, an action soap opera. And they concentrated on the dialogue. It was dialogue and drama just as much as the action stuff, which I like. But what, what some of you may not know that Gerard Christopher – um, he was actually cast as Clark um, before Dean Cain. But when the director found out that he had already played a super, uh, Superman role, he's like, man, we don't want you anymore. You know, people know you. You've done the role. We're going to let somebody else do something different with it. And then here comes um, uh, Dean Cain, which, which the show was on, you know, I think four or five years. And it did very well. Um, it put Terry Hatcher on the match. Uh, on the, she, I know she did that stuff, but then she ended up doing what? Um, I know you probably watched this Desperate Housewives. Well, well I was about to stop you, cuz, cuz oh, that name, Terry Hatcher, is the one and only Desperate Housewives. Yes, I watched every season except for the first season of Desperate Housewives. And she, I'm looking at her picture right now, I just Googled it. She wasn't my favorite character on that show. But I love the show. Shout out to Desperate Housewives, Eva Longoria, and everyone that made that show possible. I was so heartbroken when we took it off. Wait a minute, <laughs> this, who's the redheaded? Who was the redheaded chick? I always loved her. She always plays this kind of crazy role. Remember when she was on Melrose Place? Who's that chick? I cannot remember her name, but I know exactly who you're talking about. And she played the um, oh, the prim and proper Miss. Yes, kinda, but did she, kill, she kill know, somebody on Desperate Housewives or something? Yeah, yeah. But he came um, back to life, and it was it was a guy from Dune. That was her husband or something. Was he the one with the dark hair that was a doctor? Maybe. Yeah, he was a guy from Dune. Okay. Yeah, yeah. She um, she was accused of murder maybe a couple of times, and she had been an alcoholic, and uh, it was a really really good show. What I really liked about it it is it was narrated. It had some of the best writers. And I was really heartbroken that they took it off. So, oh well. But yeah, Terry Hatcher. Shout out to Terry Hatcher. I really exactly. like her on that. So she, she's Hatcher, still around. Yeah. She's she's still doing her thizzle. <laughs> she is. She is. But actually, I don't think she's been in anything, in anything since um uh what uh since um Desperate Housewives. But it was good to see her, and good that she has some um superhero background that we can geek about a little bit. So after that, after Lois and Clark, um, and I, I, for some reason, all my fouls are gone. All my music is gone. Um, I don't know. Smallville. I wanted, maybe I can sing it. Somebody save me. No, that didn't work. Anyhow, <laughs> small. <laughs> that was a theme song to Smallville. Um, she, uh, she, Superman, this is more, again, another Superboy super retelling of uh, Clark Kent before he came Superman. And actually, they, he didn't turn to Superman to the very, very, very last episode. Um, and, uh, of course, Anita Tool was in there. Uh, John so- John Snyder from the Dukes of Hazzard. John Snyder! Yes! Dukes <laughs> of Hazzard! I watched yeah. that show religiously when I was a kid, me and my exactly. best friend. And, and Daisy we would Duke take turns. Yes, we would take turns as who was going to be Daisy and the other girl, and then who was going to be John Schneider, which was Bo or Luke, whichever one's boyfriend um, or girlfriend. Who's he gonna he be was his Bo girlfriend. Duke. John Schneider was Bo Duke. Okay. And that car that he drove, and we were so in love the General with Bo Lee. Duke. <laughs> yeah, and think, and think, you know he's on. Um, what's the show with Betty White now? Uh, mate, something in Hot in Cleveland. Hot in Cleveland. He's well, he was on the show. I don't know if he's still on it now. But John Snyder is one of those actors, and you see that that kind of stands the test of time, looks wise. You know, I think John Snyder has gotten better looking. I'm like, wow, this he has really retained his looks. He's turned into a really uh, the mature looking 
um, handsome man that he was when he was a, a younger actor during um, the Dukes of Hazzard. I'm like, huh, you go, John Snyder, because um, <laughs> you're doing big things. <laughs> but he played Clark. That he he was um, Clark's father um, in Smallville. But Tom Welling, you know, there there's several actors that kind of have le- left their mark on the Superman franchise. And I think you know Tom Welling is one of them. He was he was Clark, just like um, he he reminded me the most of of Christopher Reeve, how he took on the role. And um, in my opinion, he's definitely left his mark on the Superman mythology. Um, he, again, he embodied the, the role. He made it his own. Um, so we talked about, they, and they had all the villains. They they had Lex Luthor. Uh, they did shout outs to the Justice League because they did have like a little uh, Justice League. Um, we did get to see a whole episode of the Justice Side of America. You know, you had Lana. You had Jimmy, you had Perry, um, TJ, which was on the it was the the, the uh, African American character that was on um, Smallville, like in the first two or three, maybe four seasons, and they got rid of them. You know how they do some black actors? <laughs> you know they go upstairs and you never see them again. <laughs> <laughs> You remember on Family Matters? Remember on Family yeah. Matters when, when the the there was because there was three children, a young girl, and then there was a little boy. I, and then they 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 sent them upstairs to bed one day, and we never seen them again. Right. <laughs> and the girl ended up doing porn. No, she was living yeah. in Atlanta doing doing porn. You know, and she blamed them. They sent her upstairs, and she turned into a hoe. But anyhow, <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow. Like I said, this was this was a good show. It, it lasted what ten seasons, and I loved every portrayal, um, even Supergirl's portrayal in this movie. In this movie, in the show, Laura Vandervoort. I know I said her name wrong. Absolutely gorgeous actor. She she played um, a great Supergirl, but my favorite Supergirl was Helen Slater. Remember Helen Slater? Mm-hmm, yeah, I remember. From her. the Legend of Billy, I mean, she was in the Legend of Billy Jean. Um, Helen Slater was the first Supergirl uh, on anything, and she had her own movie. It had Faye Dunaway Dunaway in it, and that was the villain. They 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 referenced the Phantom Zone. Um, if you go to the to the website, you can see it. I was hoping to get Helen on. I was had been emailing her like crazy, but um, she never responded. So, but she's doing she's still doing so. She's on um uh not Pretty Little Liars. She's actually on a show and she looks phenomenal she she looks just as good as she did when she played supergirl but my in my opinion she was the best supergirl it was kind of corny it didn't do good at all people were not having it they didn't want supergirl on the big screen um it was part of the original superman franchise but they wasn't having it It didn't do good but it's still i actually bought it on itunes i think they had it on sale one day for Mm 7.99 and i actually bought it so if you ever want to see it because i can give you get you a copy of it I should have okay, sent it to yeah. you prior to that. <laughs> but like I said, <laughs> Smallville was the longest running live action superhero themed television show in history. Um, the only problem I had with Smallville was the last, last episode. Even though you see this beginning, it has a beginning, it had a middle, where kind of like they forgot where they was going. Then it changed up. They start heading toward, okay, he's going to be Superman. And then the very last episode, when he finally gets the cape, it's in his hand. We've seen it a couple different times throughout the series, but he has it in his hand. His dad is like, here you go. Um, you are now ready, that kind of thing. Passing off, not even passing the torch, it's like that right. kind of coming of age. You know, and he, and he finally, because he never flew through the whole show unless he was possessed or it was another person being him. Um he flies. He flies for the on his own, really, for the first time. And he, you see him in the cape um, and the tights, but you don't, you never see his face. It's, it's way off. He's saving a plane, which which Lois is in. Um, but and I, I did my research, and I knew this a couple of years ago before the show ended. They would they were never going to let him actually don the suit and let you see him in Superman. I remember the very last scene when just before the show's going off, he's talking to Lois. He hears something, and she says, "I know you got to go." And he he starts to walk away, and he opens his shirt, and it has a Superman emblem on it. But you never seen him head to toe in the whole Superman. Something about DC. 
um, didn't it was there's all these copyright infringements and I didn't know you know Superman is Superman you know these people I guess it's about money on some level but let that boy he's played this role has kept you guys you know in the media you know this long let him don the whole outfit I think you, I think the the uh, the viewers that have been watching the show for so long um, they deserved it you know but they didn't give it to us. <laughs> they 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 didn't give it to us. Um but during this time we also had uh cuz um super uh super Bear. Smallville came out in 2001. Um but uh the the next movie came out in 2006 which was a, and everybody thought that that, that um Tom Williams is going to be this Superman, but of course it was Brandon Ralph from I think it was Danny Darko. Uh, which was, that was a good movie, but and this guy's he's another. All the people that they've ever had play Superman have been very nice looking, dark haired men. You know they've picked right. Um, but um, Brandon Ralph, this I hated this movie. I remember a friend and I, a friend and I went to see this movie, um, and we're sitting there. There was so much other stuff going on in this kind of ghetto theater. There was two chicks down there on their phone. There was a baby crying behind us. There were two guys fighting in front of us. We stayed to watch to see what was going to happen with all that, and we wouldn't even really watch the movie. It was that bad, <laughs> in my opinion. I'm sure there's some people who loved it, and actually, it did pretty good. You know, as movies go. Um, that came out, you know, the last Superman movie was in 1987. So how many years is that? That's what, 20, 30 years before we got yeah. another Superman movie. And um, so it, it, you know, it, it see, then the budget made more sense. $232 million to make, you know, and, but then you think about it, it only made 390 million, almost 391 million worldwide. So they got the money back, but it was a blockbuster. Yes, did they make a lot of money? They did make this movie didn't make as much money as the original Superman the movie. Uh, if you do the math, uh, it killed it. It, it made two hundred and fifty million, where this only made what one hundred and sixty million. You know, but it, it, one hundred sixty million. You know, it, it didn't get you a second movie, particular Brandon the Brandon Ralph version. Uh, it could be Brandon Ruth, but I think it's Brandon Ralph. Uh, but he he was good. He looked good in the outfit. But I just wasn't, you know, they they, they didn't do anything new with the, the story. Oh, but you know what? In that movie, Superman had a baby. What? He had finally <laughs> knocked up Lois Lane. Well, they kind of alluded to it. They never said. But he kept on visiting this kid. It happened to be Lois Lane. She was married to somebody else. And... um but that was that was his son. But then he takes off again, and because this was actually supposed to be the number um, Superman Return was number five from the original series. You know, they had four movies. This was number five because he had disappeared after number four supposedly, and he had been gone all this time. And then he comes back, and they're like, "Oh, he's back! He's back!" And and uh, then it kind of Lex, Lex Luthor again. It was, it was the same formula. It was Lex Luthor, Superman, Kryptonite, Lois Lane. Mixed together, equal to bad movie, and it, 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't have returned if somebody gave me a ticket. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have returned to see it. It was a mess. Wow. Anyhow, <laughs> um, that was all. Just about all the actors that um, uh, that played Superman. If I forgot anybody, I hope the fanboys will uh, email me or let me know because there's been a ton of animated films i've watched all of them there's actually a new one uh that i haven't seen yet but i'm going to see what is the straight to video my favorite was batman superman apocalypse that's really good it's the superman supergirl story really really good um there's like several so a lot of these actors they they have lent their voices to some of these roles so you can hear um uh and, and to the video games as well you can hear um, the, these same people. If you know the voice, if you watched it long enough, you can hear everything. But um, like I said, that that that's that's my Superman. You know this new guy, which he looks phenomenal. It looks like they've changed up. Have you seen the picture? Did you see the picture on the website? I did. I did. 
They, you know, see what they lost? They lost the little speedo that went over the blue tights. <laughs> did you notice that? You know, yeah. I'm a crotch watcher, so I did. I did notice that. I'm like, oh wow! But the outfit looks fabulous. He looks fierce because um, Henry Cavill. Did you ever see um, what was that? Oh, it was Robin. He played Theseus in Immortals. Did you see Immortals? No, I didn't. No. Well, he played Theseus. He was phenomenal in that. Um, he looks good as Superman. But I don't think he's. Don't get mad at me. I for saying this. I don't think he's as a is as attractive as say Tom Welling, Christopher Reeve, and Brandon Ralph. I think he's attractive, but I think they are more attractive. If that makes sense. But I'm not taking nothing away from his looks. That he does look good. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he's he's gonna he's gonna be a phenomenal um, uh, Superman. I hope the franchise t- takes off again. And there's like I said, there's so many things happening with Superman this year. His 75th anniversary, this new movie. You have the brand new Injustice game. There's a new animation um, uh, that's out right now on iTunes. Um, it, it's 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 a good year. He has a new book. Um, in the DC comic line, which is going to be shared with everybody on free comic book day. That's one of the free comics. Um, what else? And if you go to the website, you see the latest trailer. You can either look on the main homepage or you can look, um, Oh no, it's on the main homepage under free comic book day. Uh, and that's going to be recycled blog talk, dot blog dot com. I always say talk. What's that about? <laughs> I mean, I, I'll, I've said it several East Coast times. Anytime soon. <laughs> Pardon? I said move into the East Coast anytime soon. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe that's in my future. Maybe, maybe something's getting me ready for that. I don't, I don't think I, I can do that. They get too much snow. I can't do that. Black Talk I, Radio. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm moving. <laughs> I'm moving south again. Uh, when I get, and oh, I was right. June 14th is Man of Steel, and um. Like I said, all these things are really comic books specific. We have all these comic book movies coming out this summer. You have, of course, um, uh, what's that show called? Uh, Iron Man's coming out on Friday. Um, then you have Iron Thor Man coming looks out. Good. He's it another looks... dark-haired, nice-looking superhero too. You know, I'm really glad that Robert Downey Jr. got his act together. Remember when Robert Downey Jr. was crazy? Yeah. He he got his act together, and I, they couldn't have picked a better Tony Stark. Um, it's going to be a real. It's going to be a, a little bit darker movie. Um, they're going to, and a lot of people don't know this because I actually had a found myself because I'm not an Iron Man. I didn't follow Iron Man in the comic books um, or the Avengers. Even I like them on the movies, but I'm not a. And I I read them when they did the uh, X Men Avengers crossovers, um, but. Uh, What's her? She was just named the uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. She was just named the the most beautiful woman in the world. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't see how that happened because it should have been Beyonce, but you know that's a story for another time. <laughs> but <laughs> she um, she has a real big role in this because in the comic books, Pepper Potts, she um, she actually gets uh, Iron Man armor of her own, and the character's name is Rescue. So and this and this. Um, uh, version of the movie in this third um, movie, she's gonna be rescued. The the the, the new um, Tony Stark Iron Man armor that's made specifically for her. So I don't know how they're gonna. They haven't showed much about it, and I, but the, the the blogosphere is talking about it. Um, some of the the online reports are talking about it. So hopefully that's gonna translate way to way to film. I think the Mandarin's gonna be the. Um, See, I'm just, I'm just, I'm such a comic book nerd. The Ma- the Mandarin's going to be the villain, I think, um, in this uh, movie. So I'm looking forward to Don Cheadle is back. I'm looking forward to seeing Iron Man three. Hopefully, to end my free comic book day on Saturday, I'm going to go see um, Iron Man three. Hopefully, Th- those are my plans, my tentative plans um, right now is to go check all that out and. Um, and I know you're going to go to Free Comic Book Day and get some stuff and see what's going on. You probably won't go. I'll I wish I was in, go. I wish you was in. I wish I was in Indy because I so would be there and we would be going. Or if you were down here. 
I will go. If I can go to the firefighter convention and, and, and shout out to firefighters and policemen and emergency people, I think they're there are real American heroes, heroes too. Exactly, there are exactly. Heroes all around the world, they're heroes. Um, but I went to the firefighter convention last weekend. So, hey, if I can go to the firefighter convention, I will try to go to the comic book convention. Did y'all hear that? She said try. <laughs> You can't get much past me, chick. Seriously. <laughs> you probably say I'm tired. I, I haven't heard from this chick in two or three days, and then when she finally texted me, she said she was tired. And I'm like, girl, please. <laughs> Who knows? I might meet my husband at the comic book convention. So you I'm like, oh, as, as looking as good as I did to the firefighter convention to the comic book convention. I will be. Which is termination. I will be. <laughs> I would be so happy if you would. That would be that would really make my um, geek fanboy really really uh, go a little crazy there. Um, <laughs> contest, contest, contest. I, I think I told you a little bit about the contest, but um, not a whole bunch about it. Um, if you, you guys, if you want to win um, uh, a comic book, a uh, Digital copy and it's going only giving away one, um, and the 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 what I'm giving away is it's called Look Up in the Sky, the Amazing Story of Superman, and I think it has some of the actors. I think it goes up to 2006, so it kind of mimics the show. Well, I kind of mimic the show up into 2006, but then we go on to do Smallville because I don't think they have 2000. Uh, they don't have much Smallville stuff on it. But anyhow, it's it's free, you know, and I'm gonna give one winner. Um, a copy, and all you have to do is follow our show on the five by five on Blog Talk Radio, or you uh, oh, and I think we have follow, then email us um, uh, to let us know that you did it. Um, you have to listen to the show and make a comment on the show, whether it's good or bad, but don't make a bad one because I will be very upset. Uh, <laughs> and I'm gonna put myself out there if you want to talk about how. Uh, it, it, how bad it is that I don't know comic books and stuff. You can it, they can do that because they I'll take the I'll take one for the team. They better not. <laughs> no, they won't. Um, no, but it's like so, like I said, let's go back over it again. Um, Look up in the sky, the amazing story of Superman. One digital copy to one winner because the digital copy will be delivered through email from iTunes. So you have to have an iTunes account. Um, so you can actually download it. So just listen to the show, um, whether you're listening live right now or archived. Um, comment here uh, on the 5 by 5 Blog Talk radio show or on the blog, which is RecycleBlogTalk.blogspot.com. And if you go to the Men of Steel page, you can comment there at the bottom. And then email me after you've done all three. So I can have your email address so I can deliver the digital copy. Um, and then you'll get the video. So I thought it would be something kind of good to go with this this th Superman theme um, uh, um, broadcast today and free comic book day and 75th anniversary of Superman and all the superhero movies that are coming out. Uh, we're get, we're ready to get our geek on. This is, this is um, going to kick everything off. Um, this weekend, uh, starting Friday with Iron Man. Uh, I will be checking all the uh, entries, honestly. And um, the kind of starts is going to start today, right after the show, and it will end on Monday, May the thirteenth at eleven fifty nine p.m. Um, Central Standard Time. Uh, be one winner, and we'll pick it at random. And then on our May twentieth show, um, we will announce the winner, um, and then we'll. Um, uh, send you your uh, copy. And so, but coming up, we have a couple things coming up. Let me give the guys, you guys the show itinerary for the next uh, couple weeks. Um, of course, story Tuesday, story tomorrow. I haven't finished yet. Uh, only 30 minutes, and it's going to be uh, later in the evening, 10 o'clock. Um, and this is, I think me and you, Nicole, have talked about this. Um, it's called Sidewalks and Scooters. Nikki, you out there? I'm out there. I'm out oh. there. Sidewalks and Scooters. 
Scott, <laughs> so, so I thought I lost you. I've, I've been hitting a whole bunch of buttons. I thought I disconnected you. Anyhow, um, it's called Sidewalks and Scooters. That's going to be our True Story Tuesday story for tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Um, and it's about uh, something that happened. I think I told you about it uh, the other day when I was coming home um, about somebody walking in the street and then about all these crazy scooters. It's summertime, and I ain't having it. <laughs> so listen in it's going to be a funny it's going to be a funny story and thank you guys so much um for listening um our last show that me and me and Dolly Nick Dolly Nikki and I did um the one about John Ham and Brad Paisley you guys have really listened to it a lot um and the true story Tuesday stories I I looked at some of the numbers today and I was like wow that's crazy um but um, so that's going to happen tomorrow. Then on the fourth, which is Saturday, um, we'll have an on location stuff, uh, on location show with Free Comic Book Day. Um, I did have a part one and part two, but I'm just kind of put them all together, um, and we'll work out that way. Um, and then on the sixth, um, if Dar- and that's going to be Monday, if Dawn and Nikki's available, and I'm sure she'll have yeah, a lot to say. Um, it's a lot to say. It's gonna be. It's not gonna be. I think the six is in the sixth next Monday. Sixth is a Monday. Yep. What's yeah. What's the topic? Next, bully. Ooh. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Excuse me. I told you. Um, I watched the documentary on bully on Netflix the other night. And I'm like, and I start writing the blog. It's a really good blog. It's it's actually on the um, blog right now. If you guys want to read it, um, and I, but I wanted to do it justice, um, so I didn't want to go into it too fast um, because it, it's a personal story of mine um, that that I've kind of brought some stuff with me from my childhood about being bullied into my adult life, which is is not good. You know, I know how you let some of the things go, but this is my way kind of to write it down and get down so I feel better about it. And um, I know you had some, you know, growing up in a major city because I didn't going to going to a school that probably was a t- twice the size of mine. I probably either was a, w- witnessed it or was a victim to it in more ways than one. If you've been in a lot of the different, this girl's done a lot, y'all. Y'all just don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, so I know you, you have your own personal accounts of being bullied or even seen. Um, bully going on so but this past right. weekend the cartoon network has started their bully effect um uh series which it features the main a- actor alex libby in um from the bully documentary and uh, it was a stop speak up to bullying uh, i mean no stop bullying speak up that's their that's cartoon network's campaign they just had a show this past weekend um dedicated to the alex libby story and looks like from what i've seen i haven't seen it yet so i need to watch the show before next monday um and i think you, you'll you be able to watch it online for a couple of days so i need to catch it um the bully effect program um and it picks up where the bully show pretty much lets out and he looked like he's doing good he was smiling he was laughing because in the show he was he was so depressed and just kind of it was, I, I felt bad for him because I, cause I see myself in not only him, but several other of the characters for the show. So read the blog, look at a look up at the Cartoon Network, um, Stop Bullying, Speak Up campaign. Um, it's really interesting. Even if you're an adult, I know you have children, you know, and you do have your own memories. So I was like, mm, that's, that's kind of weird. I'm looking at the Cartoon Network because this bullying thing is devoted to children, but I live that life. You know, you probably don't know it as much as um, – as as I'm saying here, but I, I had a really difficult time, not in grade school as much because, you know, I had my sister there and nobody messed with because it was all scared of her. But um, in high school, even though I had my pack of friends, I, I, I did have some issues with, with some people, which recently I had shared with a Facebook friend, one of, one of those, one of those tormentors. Uh, had tried to add me on Facebook and we had a conversation and I'm like, I, I, I'm not ready to forgive you about what you did to me, you know? Uh-huh. And I'm like, wow, I'm, you know, I'm a man of a particular age. And I'm like, that that was, you know, 20 some odd years ago. And I, I, I didn't know how, after seeing that name and it coming up, I'm like, yeah, I'm not ready for that. So anyhow, that'll be the story on May the 6th. So I hope, oh, and it's going to be, you know, normally we have our Monday shows at one o'clock, but um, I think this show could possibly be, get featured on the website because it's, a, it's an important story. 
Um, so that's why we're doing it at uh, nine o'clock on Monday. Hopefully, if 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 I can uh, wait a minute, um, that's not going to be able to happen. I just now realized something. Um, it might have to be on Tuesday. I'm sorry, darling Nikki. Nine o'clock Tuesday. I'll change it. I'll let you guys know um, before four. Yeah, no, I'm not going to be able to do that on Monday. I just now remembered something. Um, but anyhow, that's the show. That's the next like Monday type show. That's going to be um, next week. But it probably is going to be a a true story Tuesday. Um, we might do it early. We might do it early. We'll see. I'll let you know, darling, Nikki. Okay. Yeah, or maybe. Yeah, cool. Or maybe incorporate it with, um, you know, True Story Tuesday. You know, there's a lot of celebrities too taking stance about uh, bullying. Lady Gaga is one of them. Yeah. I'm proud, the, uh, very proud the, of that. Venus Williams. Uh, I've seen it. There's a whole bunch of stuff. A lot of information on their website. Uh, but you got there's a link to it on my website, so you can go and look at it. Um, and also, my very first show was the Bow Down show, the Beyonce show. Um, about the song, I was very new. I was using my cell phone. Um, but I think you know, since I've had um, Nikki with me, I've got a little bit more confidence. The show flows a little bit better. Like the production's a little bit better, and uh, we can only get better as we progress. But I'm going to do the remix show because there is a remix out to this song. Uh, there's been a lot of... Between the first time I did the Beyonce Bow Down show to the one I'm going to do next week, um, there's a lot happening about the song, about her new concert, about what's going on, what people are saying. So... Um, I want you guys to listen in. I think you guys will enjoy it. Um, so, Dawn and Nikki, what else you got going on? Um, not too much. Just the uh, beginning of a new week, so we're going to see how this progresses. <laughs> and uh, shout out to everyone having a good week this week. Shout out to all my um, superheroes out there and um, my comic fans. I love you, even though I can't relate to everything that's been said today. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. They're, they're going to forgive you. <laughs> they're, they're not going to hold too much against you. Um, I think everybody has finally logged. Guess, guess we we switched from man to different stuff. But don't forget the contest. Check out the blog. Um, leave your comments. Give me an email. I do have a, a Tumblr page. Um, the five by five dot tumblr dot com, um, and it's just kind of rehashing what we've already um, talked about. So, guys, we gotta go. And thanks, Dawn Nikki, for sharing this day. We will see you next time. Thank you, everybody. Love ya. Be safe. <laughs> Hello?